live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2020. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's live coverage of Cisco Live 2020 here in Barcelona. Our third year of the show, over 17,000 in attendance between uh, the Cisco people, their large partner ecosystem, and the customers. I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host for this segment is Dave Vellante. John Furrier's scouring the show for all of the, the news at the event. And joining us, we have two first-time guests on the program. First sitting to my left is Patrick Smith, who is the field CTO for EMEA with Pure Storage. Sitting to his left is Eric Greffier, who is the managing director of MEAR specialists with Cisco. So you have a slightly larger region than, than, than Patrick. Patrick does. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for being here. All right, so you know, we know the show. Uh, we, we were talking that uh, you know, broad ecosystem, and of course, Cisco and the data center group has you know, very strong storage partnerships uh, highlighted by their converged infrastructure stacks. Uh, you know, I, I wrote in my research you know, many, many years ago, you know, Cisco's brilliant job was you know, when they entered the server market, they made sure that that fragmented storage ecosystem, they made partnerships across the board. And of course, when Pure's ascendancy with the Flash era uh, you know, you made the stack, uh, so you know, helping to paint those data centers orange uh, with, with your Cisco partnership. So Patrick, give us the update here, 2020. Uh, you know, what, what, what's, what's interesting and important to know about Pure Storage and Cisco customer base? You know, we, consider, we continue to see significant adoption of Flash stack, our, our converged infrastructure with Cisco, um, driving just great interest and great growth. Uh, uh, both for Pure and, and for Cisco with the UCS platform, and, and the value that the customers see in FlashStack, bringing together storage, networking, and compute together with you know, uh, overall automation of the stack. And that really gives customers fantastic time to value. And that's what they're looking for in, in, in this day and age. All right, and, and Eric, what, what differentiates the partnership with, with, with Pure versus, as you said, you are we do work with many of the, of the storage companies out there. Well, uh, so, so we, we had a baby together, you know, it was <laughs> called FlashTag, and it was a couple of years ago now, and, and as you said, uh, I think the key element for us is really to have those CVDs, those Cisco validity designs together. Um, and FlashTag was a great addition um, to our existing partnership at that time, you know, I'm talking about a couple of years ago. And, and of course, with the Flash technology of Pure, we, we've seen the demand, I would say, growing and growing. And uh, it has been amazing, amazing really trajectory together. But talk a little bit more about the CVDs, um, diff the different use cases that mm. you're seeing. I mean, I'll go through all 20, but maybe pick a couple of your favorite children. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, just to make sure that people understand what CVD means, you know, Cisco validated design. This is a kind of an outcome uh, in the form of a document which is available for customers and partners, which is the outcome of the partnership from R&D to R&D, which is just telling customers and partners what they need to order and how they need to fit all of this together for a specific business outcome. And the reason why we have multiple CVDs is we have one CVD per use case. Mm. So the more use cases we have together, the more the CVD is precise, and you just have to follow the CVD uh, design principles. Um, of course, the latest ones, and maybe Patrick, you can say a word, uh, but we've been, of course, doing things regarding analytics and, and AI, because this is a big demand right now, so maybe yes. Patrick, if you want yeah, to you say a word Yeah, you guys are first with uh, the so AI and bringing AI and storage together with your partnership with NVIDIA, so maybe go down on that. The Flash Blade was our, was our move into building a storage platform for AI and modern analytics, and we've seen tremendous success with that in, in lots of different verticals. And so with Cisco, we launched Flash Stack for AI, which brings together Flash Blade networking and Cisco's fantastic compute platform with capability for considerable scale of NVIDIA GPUs. Mm. So an inner box capability to really deliver fast time to market solutions for the growing world of, of analytics and modern AI. People want quick insight into the vast amounts of data we have. And so Flash Stack for AI is, is really important for us being able to deliver as part of the Cisco ecosystem uh, and provide customers with a, with a platform for, for success. What's happening with modernization, you know, generally, but specifically in, in Europe? Obviously, Cisco, long history in Europe. Pure, you got a presence here, mm. good presence, but obviously much newer, 
larger proportion, far larger proportion is in North America, so it's a real opportunity for you guys. What are you seeing in terms of modernization of infrastructure and apps in, in the European community? You know, modernization I, th I think is, is particularly important and, and you know, it's, it's more and more seen under the guise of, of digital transformation because you know, investing in infrastructure just doesn't get the credit that some, sometimes it deserves. Um, but the big push there is, is really all around simpler infrastructure, easier management, and the push for automation. You know, organizations don't want to have large infrastructure support teams who are either installing or managing in a heavy touch way their, their environments. And so the push towards automation, not just at the infrastructure layer, but all the way up the stack is, is really key. And you know, we were talking earlier, behind us we have the DevNet sessions here, all about how customers of, of Cisco and by, by correlation of Pure can really optimize the management of their environment, use technology like Intersight, like Ansible and others to really minimize the overhead of, of managing technology, deliver services faster to customers and, and be more agile you know, in this always on world that we live in. There's no time to really add a human to the cycle of managing infrastructure. Mm. Uh, well, I, th I think uh, we've been very proud uh, over the years because this notion of converged infrastructure, which was, uh, let's say, the promise was to simplify uh, and, and modernize the data centers before it was like, everything needs to get connected to anything. And coming with this notion of a pod, everything converged, we've done the job for you, Mr. Kasama, just think about adding mm -hmm. some pod. Uh, this has been the promise for the last 10 years and we've been very proud almost to have created this market, um, but it would have been possible without the partnership with the storage players. And with Pure, we've been one step further in terms of simplifying things for customers. Yeah, but I, I love the extension you're talking about because absolutely, converged infrastructure was supposed to deliver on that simplicity and it was, let, let's think of the entire rack as a unit of, of how we manage it, but with today's applications, with the speed of change happening in the mm -hmm. environment, we've gone beyond human speed. Absolutely. And so therefore, if we don't have the automation that you were talking about, we can't keep up with what the business needs to be able to do there. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's, it's you know, the rapid rate of change, you know, whether it's business services, whether it's supporting developers and the developer environments, you know, more and more our customers are becoming software development organizations. Their developers are a key resource and making them as efficient as possible is, is really important. So being able to quickly spin up development environments, new environments for developers, you know, using snapshot technology, giving them the latest sets of data to do, test their applications on is, is really central to enabling and empowering the developer. You know, you talk about um, Cisco's play in kind of creation of the converged infrastructure market. I think that's fair, by the way. Um, others may claim it, but I think the, the mantle goes to you. But there were two friction points or headwinds that we pointed out early in the days. The first was organizational. You know, the servers team, the storage team, the network team didn't speak together. And then a practitioner told us one day, look it, you want to solve that problem? Put it in and watch what happens. Because if you try to figure out the organization, then you'll never get there. And that, <laughs> sort of took care of itself. The other was the channel. The channel likes things separate. They can add value. They have this sort of box selling mentality. So I wonder if you could update us on what the mindset is in the channel and how that's evolved. Yeah, it's a great question. I think, I think the channel actually really likes the simplicity of, mm -hmm. of a converged infrastructure to, to sell. It's, it's, it's a very simple message and it, it really empowers the channel to take to your point about organization, they have the full stack, all in one sellable item. And so they don't have to fight for the different components. It's, it's, it's one consistent unit that they sell as a whole. And so I think it simplifies the channel. Um, and actually, we find that customers are, are actively seeking out, you know, it's, it's shown by our growth with flash stack that customers are actually seeking out the channel partners who are, are selling flash stack yeah and don't you think the channel realize wow we really do have to go up the stack add more value do things like partner with well you know, uh, for, the for, devs. For, for most of the partners they were heavily specialized on storage yeah. or compute or network ah. so for most of them um, supporting the converse infrastructure was 
to be able to put a foot you know, into another market, which was an expansion for yeah. them, which was point number one. Point number two, maybe the things that we've been missing, because since the beginning, we had APIs around all those platforms. I don't believe you know, in the early days, I'm talking about five years from now, that they got, that they could really, really, I would say, build something upon uh, the converse infrastructure. Now, if you, if you go through the DevNet area here you know, at, at Cisco Live, you will see that, that I think this is the time now for them to understand and really build new services on top of it. So I believe the value for, for, for the channel is pretty obvious now, more than ever. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great point. You don't usually hear converged infrastructure <laughs> and infrastructure as code <laughs> in the same conversation but the maturation of the platforms underneath are, are, are bringing things together. They, they really are, in the same way that IT organizations are freeing up more time to focus up the stack on automation and, and added value, the same is true of the partners. It's, it's interesting the corollary between the two. So I have a question on your act two. So what got us here the last 10 years, you, both firms were disruptors. Cisco came in and disrupted the compute space. Uh, it was misunderstood. Cisco getting into servers, that'll never work. Well, <laughs> really not getting into servers, we're changing the game. <laughs> ah, okay, 10 years later, you're very disruptive. Pure, you know, all flash, uh, really created some havoc in the industry. <laughs> Injected a ton of flash you know, yep. into the data center. Frankly, drove a truck through the legacy business. Okay, so very successful. What's act two for you guys? What do you envision? Uh, you know, you disruptors, are you sort of, you know, more incrementalist, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, I, I start, Patrick. <laughs> you, you go know, first. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, probably for us, uh, phase two is what you heard yesterday morning. Uh, I think Liz Santoni did a great speech regarding Cisco InterSight Workload Optimizer. Sorry, you know, for, for, for the name, this is a bit long. But what it means is now we truly connect the infrastructure to the application performance. Mm. And the fact that we can place and discuss about converse infrastructure, but in the context of what truly matters for customers, which is application, this is the first time ever you're going to see such amount of R&D put into bringing the two worlds together. So this is just the, the, the beginning, you know, but I think this, this was probably for me yesterday one of the most important announcements ever. Yeah. And by the way, Pure is coming with this announcement. So if you as a customer buy Cisco InterSight uh, Workload Optimizer, you'll get everything you need to know about Pure and if you have to move things around the storage area, you know, the tool will be doing it for you. Yeah. So uh, we are really, um, uh, the two of us, you know, in this, in this announcement. So yeah, I don't know, Patrick, absolutely. if you want to add. No, I mean, uh, as Eric mentioned, InterSight's important for Cisco, it's important for us. We're very, very proud to be early integrators as a third party into InterSight to allow that simple management. But, you know, as you talk about the future, we were viewed as a disruptors when we first came to market with, our, with Flash Array, and we consider still us, ourselves to be disruptors and innovators. And you know, the amount of our revenue that we invest in innovation in what is a really focused product portfolio, um, I think is, is showing benefits. And you know, you've seen the announcements over the last six months or so with Flash Array C, bringing all the benefits of Flash to tier two applications. Mm -hmm. And, and just the interest that that has generated is, is, is huge. Mm. Um, you know, in the world of, of networking with NVMe over Fabric and Rocky V2, just increasing the performance for business applications that you know, will have fantastic implications for things like SAP, time, time and performance critical databases. Um, and then what we announced with direct memory with, with adding SCM as a read cache onto Flash Array as well, you know, really giving customers investment protection for what they've bought from us already because you know they can as as, as you well know evergreen, evergreen yeah. gives gives customers an asset that continues to appreciate in value which yeah. is completely it, the opposite it, and you're both sort of embracing that that service consumption model I mean, Cisco becoming a, a very large proportion of your business. You guys have announced some actual straight cloud plays. You've built an array inside of AWS, which is pretty innovative, so. Yeah. Yes, and as, and as well as the cloud play with, with cloud block store in AWS, yeah. there's pure as a service, which yeah. takes that cloud-like consumption model and allows the customer to run it in their own data center without owning the assets. And that, that's really interesting because customers have got used to the cloud-like consumption model and, and paying as an OPEX rather than CAPEX. And so bringing that into their own facility and only paying for the data you have written really does change the game in terms of how they consume and think about their storage environments. 
Pat Patrick, we'd just love to get your viewpoint. You've been talking to a lot of customers this week. You said you've been checking out the DevNet Zone. For, for people that didn't make it to the show here, what, you know, what have they been missing? What would their peers be telling them in the hallway conversations? You know, there's a huge amount, as we've been talking about, there's a huge amount on automation. Um, and actually we see, we see it as we, as we go into customers. The number of people we're now talking to who are developers, but not developers developing business applications, but developers developing code for managing infrastructure is key, and you see it all around the DevNet zone. Um, and then the focus on containers. You know, I've been talking about it for a long time, and, and containers is so important for enterprises going forward. Um, we have a great play uh, in that space, and I think as we roll forward the next three to five years, containers is just going to be the important technology that will be prevalent across enterprises large and small. Yeah, we agree. Right. Eric and Patrick, thank you so much for giving us the update. Uh, congratulations on all the progress and definitely look forward to keeping an eye Thanks on Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. All right, uh, Dave Vellante and I will be back with much more here from Cisco Live 2020 in Barcelona. Thanks for watching theCUBE.